Hello everyone and welcome back to our building series episode 3. In our last episode we worked on our user interface and getting that displaying in the game. And what we're going to do in this part is make it so that when we click on these blocks, we can then close the menu and show it what block we're trying to build. So let's go through that process now. So I'm going to go to my build buttons UI and this is the button that shows up in the build menu. And we're going to go to graph. In the graph, we're going to go to functions and do override. So when you hover over functions, you'll see the options for override or add function. You want to override. And these are all the functions that are currently already associated to the widget. Um, we're going to override them and change their functionality. So let's go to on mouse enter. So when the mouse enters the widget sort of space, we want it to change something. And I'm going to make it change this border color. So it sort of highlights it as we walk past. So I'm going to change the name of the border here to be um, background. Oh, let's make sure it's not capitals. Background color. And tick is variable. Hit compile. Now go to your graph. And when mouse enters it, we're going to get that background color. Drag that out and choose get. And then from there, set brush color. And the color we're going to do is white. Next, we're going to do on mouse leave. So go override on mouse leave. And we're going to make it set back to its default uh, color. So set brush color. And if you want to know which color that is, go to your designer, click on the border, go to brush color. And I'm going to drag that to the top here. So we can just remember it's alpha 0.2, but if you want, you can drag it to the top and it will save it there for you. So you go to graph brush color and you can click it up here this one's going to do a full white in fact let's make it not so full let's make it 0 0.5 for example and then this one's going to do a, 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 a back to normal which is 0 0.2 okay that's that next we're going to uh, actually let's change my name text here to be all this text here to be black um, so I can actually see it against the colors here. Actually, I think it was fine as white, wasn't it? Let's put that back to white. We'll see how it looks. So let's close that and push play. And if I bring up the menu, I can hover over the mouse. So you can see it change the color. And I think the white text is still fine. So we'll keep it as white. Okay. So that's how you do that bit. Next, we'll make it so when you click on it, it does something. So on... Similarly, rather than doing on mouse enter or mouse leave, we can go to functions, override, and you'll see on mouse button down. And you get a different type of function come up. So from here, we're going to detect which mouse button was down. So go from mouse event, and we want to get, um, we'll get effecting button. And then from there, we can get equals to. And we want to do the left mouse button. Like so. So this will only work if the mouse button is the left button that's being pushed. Okay, so when the mouse button is, this is pushed, we're going to do a special thing. Okay, we're going to do an event dispatcher sending it back out. So go to event dispatcher here. And here we're going to call it um, uh, block button pressed. And we want this event dispatcher to send out some data. The thing we want to send it to is the uh, block name of the class. So on the variables here, we're going to add new variable and call it block class. And the variable type for this will be block. And we'll do uh, placeable block class reference and that's the parent block so make sure that's editable as well and exposed on spawn hit compile and we're going to use that to determine what we are going to be placing by using this event dispatcher so on the event dispatcher here we're going to do new parameter actually do we need actually i don't think we need to do the event dispatcher we'll see how we get on without it let's get rid of that 
So on the branch, rather than doing that, we're going to tell the player controller that we are changing mode back to our build menu. So for that, we're going to go to our player controller. And we want to be able to call this event as well to toggle it off. Okay, so let's make another func custom event in here. And we'll call this one toggle menu. And we'll place that in there as well. And it compile. So on my build buttons, we're going to get the player controller. Cast to my player controller. And then as my player controller, call the toggle menu event. So that'll toggle the menu off. It's fine, but we also wanted to send over which um, button we, uh, what block we're using. So my player controller is going to change somewhat. We're going to make a new variable in here saying what mode we're in. And we're going to call this one is in build mode. And this will be a boolean, which is either true or false. By default, we'll leave it as false. And the variable we also want to click here is um, block class like so, hit compile, and that would be, sorry, let's change that to a uh, placeable block, class reference, hit compile. So now we've got is in build mode and block class as two options. On our build button, we're gonna go from as my player controller, from the cast here, and we're gonna set is in build mode to be true. And we're also going to drag out from it and set a uh, block class. And that'll be our block class that we've got in our variable list here. And then that'll go on to the return node. And the return value for this would be a handled or unhandled. We're going to tell it to be handled. And what that means is that this thing is going to uh, say, yes, we received the input successfully and used it successfully. So move on. Okay, so let's just see if that works. So when I click on one of these, it should disappear the menu. Okay, good. So now I'm in build mode, I'm not in build mode. So on the player character, we've got the code to actually show when we want to place it and when we want to see it. So on the event tick, we've got is building. Rather than use the is building here, we're gonna use the is building from the player controller. Okay, so um, what we'll actually do, well, actually what will be better? Do, 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 do. Okay, we're gonna go to up here, we'll get the uh, begin play. And on begin play, we'll get the player controller. Cast to my player controller. And store that as a reference. Now the reason why we want to store it as a reference here is because cast can be quite expensive, so you don't want to put it on the tick because it's going to do an expensive thing all the time. But if we do it on begin play, it does, that, does it once and gets a reference to it, and we're going to save that reference. Um, so this reference we'll call um, my player controller. And then we can go back down to where we've got our code here and edit this to use the details on our player controller. So rather than using is building on the, play, uh, on the player character, we're going to get my player controller and then get is in build mode. And that'll go to the condition there. The When we click the button uh, on the uh, current build piece here, the current build piece is gonna come from the player controller. So get rid of that, get my player controller, and we'll get block class, and that'll be your class there, compile. So next we got our input click here. So input click, rather than turning is building off, we want to delete that, get my player controller, and then set is in build mode to be false. Hit compile. There you go. So at the start of this, um, let's test this out actually. So we go into our 
user interface and we'll go into our build menu and sorry and our build menu content so we'll click on build menu content and click on edit build menu content and this first one here I'm going to change the block class here to test block and close that so now if I were to click on it let's see if this works and I can now place my test block Go again go again and you get the gist and there you go so that will happen every time whilst we are uh, building so it will turn off the building if you want it so you can keep on building and not turn off the build mode you can do that too so uh, we've got error accessing build piece. Uh, let's go back into that. That being the player control uh, character, and that's probably on this bit here. So I'm just going to convert that to a get validated get, and only if it's valid, do that. So, um, and we'll do it here as well. We'll do an is valid for this as well. Now we'll just make sure that it is a valid variable before we do stuff with it. Get rid of that error. Okay, looking good. So if you want it so you can keep on building without having to go back to the menu each time, all we have to do is just turn get rid of this bit here. So if I just remove this section here, plug that in. And we'll tell that and that will reset the build and hit save. Now, if I hit play, go back to here, place, and now I can keep on placing blocks. Like so, and it keeps keeping going and going and going. But there you have it. So what we'll go into eventually doing is make it so we can build different types of blocks based on those button inputs. So that will come from uh, making sure we can build stuff when we have ingredients. So next episode we'll start working on the inventory to make sure we've got enough uh, ingredients to actually build the pieces that we are building. So join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady where you can watch that next part plus many other videos before anyone else from just $1 a month. Big thank you to all of my supporters so far over on Patreon. This wouldn't be possible without you guys, so thank you again so, so much. Other than that, make sure you've subscribed to the channel, hit the little like button bell, and if you have any suggestions or questions, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.